So as we are testing our code, we are going to need a way to tell how much of our code we've tested, what sections of our code are not tested, and actually be able to know that most of the important parts of our application have tests that are actually protecting them from changes that can cause side effects, which sometimes is called regression. Okay, so now to be able to tell what parts of our code are tested, what, what, what parts are not. So we are going to be installing a package called coverage. So here I'm going to come in and say pip install coverage. Okay. So what that is going to do, it's going to go ahead and install the module. So once it's done, now we need to run our python manage.py using coverage. So to run it, you want to do coverage, coverage, run manage.py test like this. So if you run this, it's going to go ahead and do the same thing it was doing. So also I want to be throwing in the verbosity flag here. So that's just supposed to be here, dash v2. Okay, so similarly, we see that we don't have more details, but if we wanted to get the coverage report, so what we could do is we could come over here and add an ambassand and then say coverage report. Okay, so now if we run this, what it's going to do is it's going to do the same thing, but now as it finishes to test, it's going to go ahead and now give us a report about our test coverage. So now you see that we have tested 44%. That means that we still have a lot of things to test. But some of the things we will notice up front is it actually went ahead to test things that we may not need to test. So it went into the virtual environment and tested those things. So the reason why it did that is because by default, it's going to be testing everything in our project. So if you wanted to limit wh where the tests, where, where it should correct coverage from or where, where it should look for the tests, we want to now say coverage run. We can say coverage run. Then we specify a source flag. So you can say slash slash source and then and then in front we can specify modules. So if you want to test only authentication, we can do authentication and then run that. Okay, so now you see that it's gonna run and now it's gonna be faster and now it's only testing authentication. If you wanted to test another another module, what we could do is we could come on the source flag and then we could put a comma and put another module. So here you can do like to do. So if we run this, you see that now it's going to go ahead and run and it's going to now run for our two apps, which is what we would want to do. So as much as that is well, good and fine, sometimes you may have more apps. Sometimes you may have more apps and more code to test. So always doing it like this might not be practical all the time. So an easier way to do it would be to specify which files we should not correct coverage from. So let me rerun this. So we see which ones we don't really need. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the root of the project. So that's going to be over here. And then we're going to create a file called coverage RC. It should be actually dot, dot coverage RC. Yeah. Then what you can do here is you can specify different files we want to omit. So you can do omit equals. And then down here, you can put a tab and then specify which files you don't want to really include. So we know we don't want to include the files in here. So what you can do is over here, we can say, I'm going to use everything in Venv. Okay. So now if you run back the test, remember now we are not specifying the flag for where to correct from. And now you see that we are not correcting from the virtual environment. So we can do this for other files that we don't want. So we also would not want to be testing the tests that wouldn't really add up. So we can come over here and say, we don't want to test the tests, tests. So things like static files, we don't want the, the runner to even look there. So even things like migrations, because that's code that's auto generated. So we can also keep it there. So also we have these files. So these and under init, we can also really omit them from the tests. So here we can also do star dunder init dunder.py. Okay. So now if we run back these tests again, you see that things are quite faster and now we are really having some files that we really care about. Okay, so now this looks good, but to be able to view which file, which lines are not tested, you can run this command and then you can run it and tell it to generate for you HTML. So if you wanted an HTML file to visualize what files are not tested, what which files are tested, which lines, then you can put and coverage HTML at the end. So what that's going to do 
is gonna go ahead and run and when it finishes to run it's gonna create a folder called html curve so over here you can see it created a folder and this folder has all the details about our tests so i'm gonna come to one of these and i'm gonna open it up in live server so that's gonna open it in a browser and when it opens up you can now see like how we are doing with the testing so i'm actually gonna go back to the root so we see exactly what's happening so here we get a nice table with each file then which you get a nice table with each file and how much of the code has been tested and which ones are not tested so if we, if we open up a file like views.py for authentication you see that we have tested out all this so where you don't see a red that code is covered by tests all this but this is not really covered by tests at this point so down here this is covered this is covered these are not covered these are not covered Okay, so now we can decide to go back and write tests for all these until we actually go ahead and make sure it is 100%. So to wind this video up, so you would not really want to be pushing this folder to GitHub. So it's also good you add it in a .gitignore. So here you can come and say .html cov like this. And guys, and now that's going to hide it. And now, guys, you can also generate XML files. So instead of generating on the HTML, you can generate XML like this. And this is important if you want to like send this data to a coverage reporting tool. So yeah, actually we are going to be doing that in some of the next videos. So now if we say XML, it's going to create this coverage.xml file, which is a representation for this HTML. So that's going to do it for now. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you later.